Shalom, royal family. The class you are about to hear is taught by the Honorable Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe, many years ago. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Visit us at www.yahweh144000.com. Also, royal family, you can enroll in classes designed for the Godhead at www.universityofyahweh.org Enjoy. In Acts chapter 4 verse 26 Please the kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together wow, against Yahweh and against his son Yahweh Now, I have a problem right here. Here I come, born from among you, a blind, deaf, dumb, ignorant, dead people, helpless, without weapons, even without knowledge, don't even recognize me when I come to you. The kings and the rulers of the earth with their vast weapons and armies are against my daddy, Yahweh, and me. How in the world can I win against a deck stacked like this? You mean to tell me that I come here to you in the name of a man that nobody today is allowed to look at? Stand up against a nation that has atomic bombs and jet aircraft and mighty navies and military up on the high seas in the air and on the ground. Such a Goliath that makes all the nations tremble in their boots. You mean to tell me that I can come here raised falling out between your legs, carried in your stomach, come out from between your legs, and come and deliver you and take you from our enemy and put you in the hands of the one intended? Rescue you from danger and set you free from bondage? Rescue you from slavery? But look at the eyes, the kings and the rulers of the whole world have counseled together against my father Yahweh and me, his son. You mean I'm supposed to prevail against us? You mean I will prevail? Prevail. To be widespread or current. Occur as the most important or frequent element. Prevail. To prove superior in power or influence. Prevail. To succeed. To use persuasion successfully. Prevail to triumph, be victorious, come out on top, prevail, succeed, rule, reign, exist, prevail, be prevalent, be in force, prevail. You mean we will prevail? You mean we shall overcome? But I'm sent to a people that sometimes they don't even know whether they want to work for Yahweh or not. I'm sent to save a people who some of them get tired working for Yahweh. I've come to rescue a people to give them eternal life 
and they resist working for the one who offers them eternal life. Sometimes they'd be around four years and go back out to be with the enemy. I've come to a hot-headed people, a, a stiff-necked people, a people that are wise to do evil but to do good. They have no understanding at all. How in the world can I be successful with hot-headed people like this? Sometimes there are those who want to work for Yahweh like they want to work for him. If they can't work for Yahweh on their own terms, they don't want to work for Yahweh. And with those kind of people around me, I'm still supposed to prevail. I'm sent to a people who like to hear the word, but they don't want to do the word. They're always confused between hearing and doing. They say they're confused because working for Yahweh is hard to them. Being a Hebrew is hard to them. Taking orders from somebody that looks just like them is hard. And I'm supposed to prevail against the kings and the rulers of the earth who have the vast land mass of the planet earth under their control. And I'm supposed to prevail against that kind of unity with a crazy people standing around me who don't even know if they want to be standing there. But the kings and the rulers of the earth and all heathen are raging. They really are upset now. They see Yahweh's name cropping up all over the country and outside the country. Yahweh's name is cropping up. From house to house, Yahweh's name is flying. From house to house. The children of Yahweh that have been scattered abroad are being drawn back to his name. And they're waking up saying, I want my inheritance. I've been without my inheritance for a few thousand years now. I'm ready for my inheritance. We heard that one day one was coming back. We heard he was coming back. We heard he was coming back. They lied to us and gave us a false image, a false white Greek name. But that's not our inheritance. Hebrew Israelite names are our inheritance. Waking up to my inheritance. But the heathens are raging. There are those who say they love me, but they will not keep my commandments. But it is written, if you love me, keep my commandments. See, if you love me, keeping my commandments is not a hardship. See, because Yahweh say, them that hear shall live. The time is coming. The hour is coming, and now is, when all that are in the grave shall hear my voice. And them that hear shall live. In the meantime, the heathens are raging. In the meantime, the people are imagining a vain thing. In the meantime, the kings of the earth are standing up. And they and the rulers are all gathered together. I mean, imagine now, against Yahweh and me. Uh, 
against Yahweh and his son. Imagine some odds like that. People imagining a vain thing, heathens raging. <laughs> I mean, look. And, and, and the son sent all by himself. I mean, you don't get to see Yahweh nowhere. He, Yahweh just hauled off and sent his son out here among all this by himself. Don't even let him carry a pea shooter. Carry nothing. Not even David's slingshot. Nothing. He allows me to carry nothing. I carry no weapon. Here I am standing without any weapon among heathens raging. People imagining a vain thing. Kings and the rulers of the earth standing up, gathered together against my father who sent me and me who is sent. Then I come to a people that are stiff-necked, hard-headed, look at me crazy, sit up and roll their eyes at me. They look so crazy and mean and fierce to Yahweh said, don't be scared of them. Be not afraid of their looks. Be not afraid. Watch out. Be not afraid. They are crazy. That's all. Don't worry about them. They're just stupid. Don't worry about them. They're not wise to do anything but evil. Don't worry. But don't you worry about them. I'm sending you to them anyway. But don't you be like them now. Don't you be stupid and hard-headed and stiff-necked and rebellious. They are rebellious. Wow. I mean, now, you know, that, that could be terribly discouraging. That's enough to make an ordinary man quit. <laughs> An ordinary man would give up and be discouraged. Now face that now. You sit into a world full of heathens and they are all raging. You sit to a, a, all the people of the earth are imagining vain things against it. Then the kings and the rulers and the armies, they are all standing up together in council together against the one that sent you and you sit all by yourself. And then the people you sent to, they don't even recognize you. You sit to them, you come to them, and they receive you not. They look at you crazy, stiff-necked, hard-headed, and rebellious to this very day. Have no knowledge of good. Everything about them is to imagine evil. Won't even go to bed in peace. I'm supposed to prevail against all of this. No wonder when Yahweh asks for who will go and stand for me. No wonder nobody would say anything. <laughs> Out of the whole world, he said, who will stand for me? Who will bridge the gap? Who will go? And the book say, one man on the whole planet earth stood up and said, here am I. Send me. I knew what kind of people you were when I came. When I stood up and said, here I am. Send me. I knew what I was coming to now. I, I haven't been disappointed at all. The descriptions of my people are perfect. Oh, Yahweh. Acts 4, 27. Read. For of a truth, against thy holy child, Yahweh, whom thou hast anointed. Both Herod and Pontius Pilate, that means what? The king and the ruler, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, all were gathered together. Look at verse 29. Read. And now, Yahweh, be, the son, Yahweh, behold their what? Threatening. See? It's very clear. They're threatening. Interesting. All of this. I'm suffering all of this. I'm going through all of this. To bring you your inheritance. I 
I am enduring all of this heathens raging, a world full of full of heathens raging. People imagine fame, kings and the rulers of the earth counsel together against my father who sent me and me, and then have to contend with you acting crazy on top of it. Yet I endure all of this to bring you your inheritance. No wonder the scripture speaks of him having so much love for you. For the son so loved the world of Israel. He so loved the world of Yahweh. The world of Israel, the inheritance. that he gave me to you that you might be saved and to have the job of trying to save a scattered people who themselves have taken counsel with the Gentiles verse 27 lets you know that even the children of Israel the so-called black man of America have taken counsel with the enemy against me. All of the so-called black leadership, they have gathered together in unity to lead our people to Pharaoh in America, knowing I, have, I am offering you the only salvation. They're in counsel together. And I'm supposed to prevail against all of this? And you think my job is easy. Everybody on the planet Earth is against me. Except a few first fruits. Now you think about that. Everybody on the entire planet Earth, four billion, four hundred million people are united and have taken counsel against me, except for the few of you as the first fruits of the harvest. Even my own people to whom I am sent are in counsel against me. Even some come and play the Judas here, pretend that they love me and hug me and kiss me and go and report to the devil and go back out and live with the devil and show that they love the devil after coming and hugging me and kissing me. I even have to endure that. They do it all the time. From the beginning, they've been doing it. And you are witnesses. How many of you are witnesses that they have come, hugged me and kissed me? And they're back with the enemy. All of this I suffer and bear and endure to give back to you your rightful inheritance. And instead of being loved by my people to whom I am sent to give them that rightful inheritance to rule the world forever, I'm hated, despised, and rejected of men. Despised and rejected by those to whom I'm sent. one end of the planet Earth all the way to the other end. 
And I'm supposed to prevail? I shall prevail? How can one come and with a few of you make the world hear the name Yahweh? Yet we're doing it. From one man, the world is talking about Yahweh. He is a force to be dealt with. Yahweh's name, his name is a force to be dealt with. So powerful that every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess. Yahweh is God. Shine, Yahweh. There is no God. Yahweh is king of all kings. Yahweh is Lord of all lords. And he chose you and me to glorify his name, praise his name, to extol Yahweh who rides upon the heavens by his name, Yahweh. Acts 4, 26, it says, they also are against his son. He is not the son of anybody else. Notice who everybody in the world is against. They're against Yahweh and his inheritance. So you who come to me as my disciples and you who come to follow me in Yahweh, you are a part of this here. One and two. Read. Has by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. The worlds were made by his son. As a message for you in these last days. that the son of Yahweh is the heir of all things. Hmm? Not the heir of some things. All things. See, the son of Yahweh is the heir of how much? No wonder the kings of the earth and the rulers of the earth have taken counsel together to kill us off from the knowledge of our inheritance as the children of Yahweh, Hebrew Israelites, our own holy land, and the knowledge of our nationality. No wonder they cut us off from this knowledge because, you see, they know we are the heirs of all things. I am the heir of all things. I am appointed heir over all things. And you with me, I'm going to prove that. See, I'm going to prove in a moment that you too are heirs with me. over all things. Now, who is the owner of a thing? The thing, the maker or that which is made? The maker is the owner. The Hebrews are the heirs of all things. Let's see, in the book of Hebrews, this is uh, the epistle to the Hebrews. In verse 2, you are the heirs of all things. The chapter tells you this is an epistle to the Hebrews. Well, what belongs to you Hebrews? You are heirs of all things. See, in chapter 1, verse 1, he spoke to our father, the prophet. 
Yahweh who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet. They were all black and Hebrew Israelites. Who was one of our fathers? Abraham? Give me Genesis 14, 13. Genesis 14, 13. Read. All right. Abraham is the father of Isaac. Who is the father of Jacob? Who is the father of the twelve tribes, including Judah, the chief ruler? Of which tribe we are part? What tribe are we? What did Yahweh choose Judah to do? How long? Who is Judah? What did Yahweh choose you to do? That's it. So this is your inheritance. The inheritance of the Hebrews. What did Yahweh promise Abraham in chapter 13, around verse 15? Turn to it. Let's see what he promised. Land. Genesis 13, 15. Let's see what he promised Abraham. Read. All the what? All the what? Talking about land. And when Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac, the question came up about what? Land and inheritance and who the rightful heir is. The so-called black man of America has been cut off from the knowledge of his inheritance. Cut off from the knowledge of the mysteries of the Bible. He sees mysteries and symbols and pictures that are in the Bible that is described there, but he does not have the knowledge of it. Why? Because he's been cut off from it. But in these last days in Hebrews 1 and 2, you're being spoken to by the son of Yahweh who is appointed heir over all things. Galatians 3.29. Galatians 3.29. Read. And if ye be Yahweh the Messiah, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You ever wanted to know your identity? Your identity is established when you belong to Yahweh the Messiah, the son of Yahweh. You have to belong to him. See, that's apostrophe S. If you be his, see, Yahweh say, I have given them to him. My father has given them into my hand. And no man can pluck you out of my hand. Nobody can pluck you out of my hand. You're in my hand and glad to be there. And you become an heir. You belong to the Son, Yahweh. Then you are indeed Abraham's seed. And being belonging to Yahweh the Messiah and being Abraham's seed means you've got something coming. You are heir. You are not one heir with an S on it, because there's a lot of us. Heirs. 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 According to the promise. 
Now we just read in Genesis 14, 13, I mean 13, 15, who made the promise? And he's not a man that he should lie. Numbers 23, 19? Turn. He made the promise and he's not a liar. Read. All right. So Yahweh is not a liar. He's never lied. He made us a promise and said that if you belong to his son, Yahweh, the Messiah, then you are indeed the seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise. Now, what did he promise Abraham? Abraham. What? Abraham. He promised Abraham what? Abraham. So we own the land. Right now, it's about inheritance. It's about our inheritance. All those beasts rose up to take us into captivity, to destroy our holy city, Jerusalem, and to destroy our land so they could seize our inheritance. But Yahweh said, in the last day, I will raise up one from among you and his brethren. He's not going to speak what the people want to hear him say. He is going to speak all that I tell him to speak. He's not going to follow the people's command. He's going to do all that I command him to do. Not everybody is going to love what he's saying and doing. But those that know his voice, they'll love what he's saying and they'll love what he's doing. Because they belong to him. They are a part of the inheritance. They are heirs with him of the promise of Yahweh. This message makes the heirs happy. See, we have been servants. But I've come to change your status. I said, I have come to change your status. I have come to change your environment. I have come to change your condition. I have come to change you from being a slave into a free man. I've come to change you from being disinherited to the inheritor. I've come. Chapter 4, verse 7. Read. Thou art no more a servant, but a son. Read. And if a son, then an heir of Yahweh through his son Yahweh, the Messiah. Read, Read verse 6. And because ye are son, Yahweh has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father, Yahweh. Greetings, royal family. Let's talk about the most prestigious private university in the universe, the University of Yahweh. It is here where students, parents, adults, and teachers study the divine mind of Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, thus elevating them to contemplate 
and understand the loftier concepts and principles, enabling their minds to focus and think on an extraterrestrial level. This intellectual ability and unique set of skills supersede all base, mundane, and terrestrial thinking, thus allowing one's minds to open up and flourish with an overwhelming abundance of creative ideas and loftier concepts, making life and living more enjoyable. The University of Yahweh is woven deep within the fabric of the moral principles of truth, honesty, integrity, true holiness, righteousness, ethics, and justice for all. The University of Yahweh is designed for the Godhead, and this includes students, parents, adults, and the Godhead. In the University of Yahweh, the online platform, you gain a structured format to the approach of the divine mind of Yudhe Yahweh. We welcome you to visit our website at www.universityofyahweh.org. This platform is specifically designed for the Godhead and the Godhead family. The 144,000 chosen to rule in righteousness. We look forward to working with you as we prepare for rulership in righteousness. Praise Yute Wafe. Praise Yute Wafe. Beit Noon Sophie Yute Wafe. Shalom, Royal Family. Thank you.